What's up everyone, my name is Kluwin, and today I'm going to show you guys how I mix my tracks. And I just want to throw out there that I am not an expert at mixing, and these are just the steps that I typically take to mix. And I'm just going over some general and main points of mixing, so if you guys feel like I miss anything or want to add something, go ahead and just leave it in the comments. But anyway, hope you guys learn from this. Before you actually start mixing, try to have good sound selection. This is going to help when you're trying to mix. Using presets and sound banks are a great way to have good sound selection, but I know sometimes you guys like to make your own sounds, so just try your best to get good sound selection. When learning, try to use different sounds. For example, I have my main lead and other plucks to create this unique sound. Another thing you may want to consider when layering is to only add enough layers that you need. It's okay to have 3 layers for a section or maybe 10, so just add enough until you feel that it's right. For my super saw section, I only have 4 layers. This may seem little or too much, but it fits for the track. When layering, you can think about it as a whole. For example, the super saws and the bass complement each other to make one whole sound. The next step in mixing that I like to do is called processing. When processing sounds, you should process them in a section. A method I really like to use when mixing in section is called bussing are also known as a submix. Basically, you're going to create a mixer track where you're going to route these sounds into that one mixer track. This will help a lot to mix down one particular section and it will help your workflow and your CPU. During this stage, you can add effects to enhance your sound such as reverb and compression and we're going to fix errors within the track. The most important tool when processing, in my opinion, is gonna be the EQ. You're going to want to cut frequencies instead of boosting them. By cutting frequencies, you leave room for other frequencies to fill up that space. So for example, when you're mixing the leads, you can cut the low end to save space for the bass. Or if you want your vocals or leads to pop through, then you can cut the high end on certain sound. When EQing, you want to look for resonating frequencies, harsh frequencies, or any unnecessary frequencies. If you feel a certain sound is sounding weak, you can try adding some saturation to boost the sound. For example, if you feel your sub bass or your bass is sort of weak, you can try adding a little bit of saturation to make it sound more full. I want to note, just like layering, you should only add things that you need. Don't feel like you need to do all this crazy processing, just go ahead and do it until it sounds right. If it sounds good, then you should probably just leave it. The last step I would typically do in mixing is leveling. Basically, at this stage, we're going to try to prevent clipping and we're going to adjust the levels until they sound good. Let's take a listen at how it sounds now. I just want to note, make sure that your plugins are not clipping. Before you start adjusting, try to decide what's going to be the most important thing in your track. So for this track, I decided that the kick and the clap are going to be one of the most important things in the track. Following along it is going to be the bass and lead. So once you decide this, you can go ahead and start adjusting. What I suggest you do first is first start off with the most important sound and set it to a level that is good. So for the kick, I would typically set it to a level where it's not too loud and not too quiet. Following that, we're going to add in the clap. Now depending how punchy or snappy your clap or snare is, you're going to want to set it accordingly. Next we have the bass. And as I mentioned before, I wanted the kick to be the most important thing in the track, so I wouldn't set the bass exactly the same level as the kick. However, I do want it to sound pretty close to the kick, so I'm going to lower it just a little bit. Following the bass is going to be the lead. For the lead, I'm just going to find a sweet spot where it's not overpowering the kick and bass and where it's not too quiet. If you have shakers or hi-hats, you want to typically set it around the same volume as the kick. And for the rest of the track, I'm just going to level it until it sounds good. So 
So I just adjusted the levels and here's how it sounds now. So yeah, that's basically how I mix and of course, thank you for making it to the end of the video. I really appreciate that. Also, if you feel like I miss anything or you want to add something, once again, just add it in the comments below. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching and hope you guys have a great day.